welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Middle and Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another episode or recap of Real Housewives of Orange County, season 18, and this is episode 5. And yes, I know I'm way late on this. <laughs> the new episode actually comes out. Um, well, probably about time this posts later today. But better late than never, right? Right. I kind of already gave you guys a heads up that um, I was going to be late for the two weeks because of Summer Olympics. But now that that's over with, we're back. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so this episode was a cute episode. Um, it is picking up, though. <laughs> I will say that the episode is picking up. It was um, slowly getting there. I would say last episode wasn't as exciting. But this episode is starting to pick up and, uh, yeah, for those who kind of already watched the show, you already knew that Shannon was going to be carrying this season on her back and, yeah, she's carrying the season on her back. <laughs> so anyway, without further ado, let's get into the recap. So the episode starts with um, Terry and Heather um, at um the the boba lake um um bay club so the bay club that they go to that she actually had her um outing and stuff at at the the season premiere um they're staying there at that property because you already know she heather is the one with the coins here um heather and her husband that is but anyway they're having breakfast and Heather's in rough shape. She's like saying, yeah, I'm a little hungover. And then she kind of recaps um, Terry and lets her know what happened with Katie in reference to the golf outing and how they got into it. Um, and, and, and there's like three dual things happening while this is happening. So while this is happening, we then go over to Katie. And Katie has um, Shannon come over. And she provides Shannon with the Valentine's Day gift. So we're kind of having a little bit of a mini Valentine's Day thing. And Shannon is venting to um, Katie about her and Tamara. And she also thanks Katie for not inviting um, Alexis to the golf outing. Because I forgot, but Alexis Bellino was not in this, was not in the episode before at all. And I didn't miss her. <laughs> I, I, I mean, for those who don't know, I don't really like her. And this episode especially, I I cannot stand her. <laughs> I just can't stand her. Um, she's definitely a pick me and she's not a girl's girl. Like, it's just all, it's icky. It's very icky behavior and very pick me behavior. But anyway, so while this is happening, then we have Tamara. And um, Emily, the haters. I'm. By the way, every, anytime I see them two in a scene together, I'm going to call them the haters. Because that's all they do. They literally have a scene together. They don't talk about each other and what they got going on in each other's lives at all. They talk about everyone else. While when you look at everyone else's scenes, they literally are talking about what's going on in their lives. You, Tamara, we all know. We have no idea what's going on with Tamara. Not that I care, but we have no idea what's going on with Tamara. And Emily, we have an idea, but it's kind of boring. And hence why they talk about everyone else except for themselves. But anyway, so they're talking about, they're still doing these cheap jabs at Jen, which is really annoying. And then they start talking about Shannon. Because we know Tamara and Shannon still have unresolved issues. Um, and so that's kind of what's happening here. And then we'll go on to the next thing here shortly. I apologize. My allergies today were have been horrible because I know it's going to rain. And <laughs> I'm very allergic to like mold. And um, whenever it's about to rain, like my allergies flare up. So I know it's going to rain like soon because my allergies are just like, Ugh, just, I'm just congested. So apologies ahead of time. But anyway, moving on. So back at Heather's, um, Gina arrives first, but before Gina arrives, Heather does express how she is irritated by Gina because she feels like um, Gina, you know, when Katie was talking about 
Heather, I'm talking to Gina about Heather to Gina. She did nothing about it and kind of just let this happen. And so, which, honestly, Heather is correct. Like, that's definitely a thing. And if you see previews from next episode, Gina gets called out when it comes to all of this. Um, she kind of got called out a little bit in this episode, but they got the smoke for her next episode. But anyway, so... Heather is literally explaining to, you know, Terry that she's irritated by her for doing that. And then she's the first to arrive because <laughs> she invited. So she invited Gina and Jen for a Galentine's Day. So Gina arrives first and then Jen arrives. And then, um, you know, Terry and Gina do a small talk and then Terry and Jen do a small talk. And then it's kind of awkward because then um terry asked how was travis doing and it was just really <laughs> there was a little bit of an awkward pause and then um heather's like yeah it's galentine's day time we're gonna have a girl time and so he just leaves <laughs> but anyway so then basically immediately heather calls um gina out on what she did and gina apologizes about the katie thing but she apologized for it right away before really sorry I kind of got the order wrong there. Gina apologized to Heather about the KD thing, like, immediately. Um, and then after that, then we pan over to the other dual scene where we have Shannon and Katie talking more about it. And so Katie feels like she was kind of left hanging to dry by Gina. Because when you look at the scenes before, Gina first states to... When, like, the, when Gina, when basically um, Katie was at Gina's house, she said, hey, if you don't say anything to Heather, I'm going to. So she basically kind of added her on and had her tell, you know, Heather. But not all the way, though. Because Katie's first mistake was she told all the girls at that Wild Co Coyote night. Because it would have never came up if she would have not told Tamara and Emily. But we know Emily already knew because Gina probably already told her because Gina tells Emily everything. So in a way, you the way you look at it, if you really look at it, all three of them set her up. It's just them two are the bad cops who just kind of made it obvious. At least you saw their play and you weren't really surprised. But Gina, who masked herself as being a close friend to you, telling you not to, why you say something in front of all these girls, even though they kind of already had in their back pocket. Well, you know, Emily at least probably already had in her back pocket. And then after that, Gina's like, why would you say something to the girls? And then from there, then fall, far too gone, basically. So, I mean, really, Gina and Katie both are at fault here. But the way it looks, it looks like all three of them set her up. <laughs> you know, because I think Katie is, she's a new housewife. She just, she, apparently she ain't watching enough reality TV to see the okie doke when it's coming. But anyway, so then Katie's basically expressing her, expressing her frustration to Shannon about how Gina basically hung her out to dry. And then while this is happening, then you see Emily and Tamara talking about it and saying like, hey, I guess it's Katie's funeral. Like, because um, Emily said, if you're going to, you know, go at, you know, um, Heather, you better be ready. You better be all together. You better have your, you know, all of it together. Um, and... I mean, clearly she didn't. She got frazzled. So anyway, then from here, then we go back to Heather. Heather is still keeping her foot on Gina's neck, as she should, because, you know, Heather's, Heather's been on the Housewives for a long time. She's like, I know what you did. <laughs> and so Heather's asking all these questions to figure out how did all this happen? Like asking, like, how long have you known um, Katie? When did you know about what Katie said? When did she tell you this? 
And right then and there, that was enough for Heather to see the plays like, so she told you about this months and months ago and you didn't check her then? And you're supposed to be my friend and I've known you longer? And you just met her through sudden? You're not even really friends with her like that? And while all this is happening, Gina's backpedaling because she does not she she got nothing for um <laughs> for Heather. And and then Jen this whole entire time is watching the whole entire thing, but she she am I and I am her. She's clocking all this. She's like, man. She's like, I blame Gina. Gina set her up. <laughs> I was like, even, even like Jen caught it. She's like, yeah, I blame her. I blame Gina for that. She, yeah, it's going to be interesting now moving forward. Because basically the dynamic of the group is already kind of messed up now because of that whole thing. But anyway, so because basically Jen, Jen can see that Gina clearly put the battery in, in um, Katie's back to talk to Heather but she then just left her there. Didn't come in, didn't try to mediate or nothing. Because if she truly was a mutual friend or really claiming to be a mutual friend of both of theirs, she would have came in between them and tried to mediate. But instead, she just let them do their thing and just kind of watch the fire happen. She kind of literally did a similar thing as what Tamara and Emily did. The only difference is Tamara and Emily didn't mask them as being good friends they were they were being messy but at least you knew that's what they were doing it wasn't deceptive anyway so gina apologizes again and then jen asks where do we go from here and basically heather's like i'm gonna keep my distance from her but i don't you know expect you to stop being friends with her or whatever you can make your own decision y'all are adults on how you feel about her and how you you, your friendships with her, but there's no friendship with me and her. And I was like, there it is. But anyway, that pretty much ends that whole entire scene with all that. <laughs> next, we have this next scene. It, it's a boring scene. And I promise you, I don't really, I don't hate Emily. It's just, I don't think she should be on this show. <laughs> She's kind of a hater. And she provokes people who don't deserve to be provoked she's insecure and she has nothing going on when it comes to the storyline and she's been skating through for her whole entire time on this show but anyway so emily and shang her husband they go out to dinner she gets a new ring the ring is a nice looking ring though um and then she provides a photo of her not even the best photo though but like she did provide a photo to her husband and, and it was big. I mean, it was like art size big of like from her photo shoot, but it wasn't even the best one. But anyway, and so that was pretty much it. And then she's talking about how he's still not dieting, even though he takes care of the kids while she can go, go exercise and stuff. And she's pretty much a housewife. Make it make sense. <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much what happens here. Um, so then after that, then we have Katie and Gina. They meet um, at co Coffee and Crepes. Gina talks immediately to her about Travis. Um, they're still trying to make it work. I don't really care. And then Katie immediately gets let's gets Gina together. She was like, I literally felt like you. She basically said, I, I feel like you abandoned me. You just like left me out to dry as I was just stating my grievances to um, Heather. And basically Gina's kind of being messy and kind of being a jerk about it. She's like, well, I've known Heather longer than you. So I'm not going to pick if I have to pick. I'm not going to pick, um, you know, you over Heather. She basically said it without saying it and basically brought Katie to tears. And. Katie's like, I, I feel like I feel like I just got played, which you did. You let her use you as a plot device for this show. You did. 
And I think the realization that her friendship that she thought she was building with Gina isn't real set in. And so she's like, okay. So in her confessional, she's like, I'm just going to move differently. But she's so upset that she's literally crying in front of her. Because I think she's not really crying because she's like sad. She's crying because she's furious. I think it's more of a furious cry because she knows she just got played. Like, and she did. She literally did. She, you let this woman use you as a plot device. And now you and Heather probably, I mean, it's not real beef, but it's going to take a while for y'all to even get cool because Heather is the type where first impressions are everything. So it's probably going to take a couple seasons now if you're still, if you're going to be on the show for another season for y'all to even be cool because of what Gina did there. Yeah, you had your opinions forever. And I mean, yeah, she lied about the paparazzi thing. Because I'm sorry, I do, I do think she lied about it. But who cares? <laughs> it's like, it's a mute point. It's a who cares. And I think even when earlier on the scene, when we had um, Katie talking to um, Shannon about it, Shannon said that, hey, I'm proud of you that you stood your ground. You did a good job against her. But... I think even um, Shannon was just trying to say, like, you know, it's not worth it. Let it go. And, you know, I think and I think I think basically Katie can be redeemed. I think at the end, I think honestly, what Gina thought she was doing is going to backfire. They're all going to turn on her. And it looks like from next episode, that's what's happening. Everyone's going to start turning on Gina, which honestly because I like Katie so far. So far, I like Katie. I think her and Heather just need to have a good, like, talking to. Maybe have Sun be the me mediator. Because Sun's actually the one who's actually truly friends with both of y'all. And then, dead it. Because this is stupid. Like, y'all should not be arguing over whether she staged paparazzi pictures or not. Anyway. um, But yeah. That's pretty much what happened there. Next, we see Shannon. She's having um, lunch with her father. And one thing I noticed, so um, her father and her, her, her father's a good time kind of dad. And so he's having a glass of wine. He's kind of a turn up guy. And so we kind of learn more about Shannon and where her background comes from, about how there's always been alcohol in the home growing up. It was not used as a coping mechanism originally, but at some point in time, she kind of said it without saying it. It kind of turned to that. And I don't know her personally. <clears throat> I don't want to put her being an alcoholic on her jacket. But I will say this. She's an Aries. And I know a lot of y'all don't believe in suns and moons. But us Aries people, we are moth to flames when it comes to a good time and especially how what especially in western society how alcohol is attached to a good time it's so easy to get caught up in that like i've had moments in my life where i've had a problem but i wouldn't call myself an alcoholic because i actually twice a year i go at least twice a year where i go like a month or two without drinking at all like i just literally decide to stop drinking just to get myself together and cleanse and whatnot and I don't know, and this is just me stating it, I don't think if I was an alcoholic, I would be able to do that because that's truly a chemical imbalance. And I do feel better and fresher when I do, you know, detox. Like right now, I'm actually detoxing right now. Like I'm not drinking any alcohol. Um, I went to a bachelor party like two weekends ago and I knew that was the last time I was going to drink. And I was like, okay, we're done. Um, I did get a little tempted this past weekend, but I was like, eh, especially today in this day and age, if you're in a major city, I mean, you, there's so many NA cocktails or NA beers and stuff like that. So you can still be social and be out and about. And I think that's Shannon to me pins me as that type of person. She seems like she's a social drinker. I don't see her necessarily being a, someone who drinks by herself. She might do that when she's going through a depression. And it seems like her relationship that she had with John Jansen was toxic enough where that would do that. I mean, she kind of, you could tell because she gained a lot of weight. Because also, too, weight gain, 
That's usually how that happens because you are drinking more. So you, your face and everything is swelled up. So along with stress, uh, because it's also stress inducing. So I guess my whole thing is I don't see her really being necessarily alcoholic, but I don't really know her like that. But maybe she just needed that wake up call. Unfortunately, that was a really horrible wake up call. Um, and I'm not, I do not condone, I'm not okay with, you know, drinking and driving at all, but you know, it happens to every, you know, it, it, it can happen and I don't say it happens to everyone, but it definitely can happen. Um, I do find it hard for it to happen now in 2023, 2024, um, because there's Lyft and Uber and everything else, but when you're under the influence, you don't think straight. So, I mean it still could happen. <laughs> Let's be real. And we saw on the show, she was drinking herself to a stupor a lot of times. So I don't expect someone who's been drinking like a tank and drinking out of depression to be thinking straightly. Uh, I'm saying this because there's someone on this cast who is doing the opposite approach of what I'm doing, which is actually having empathy what someone's going through and realize everyone's human and not project and I'm talking about Tamara <laughs> and I'm gonna get I'm gonna wear her out by the end of this episode but anyway um but so I say all that because she's talking to her dad we hear we will find out more about Shannon and how she grew up she did actually state that she is having one or two um, drinks maybe a week um, I did kind of sigh eye that when she said that because I think when you're on probation and maybe California is different I just know when you're on probation you're technically not supposed to be drinking when you're on probation like at all because I'm pretty sure with probation you can have random like drug tests and if you have anything in your system, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a probation violation. But who knows? I don't know her case. I'm not going to say all that. But I did sigh that too when she said that. But at least she was honest, you know. And she talks to her dad about John Jansen. And I mean, her dad just said, take him to the clingers, fight it. Because... If you didn't watch the last recap or last episode, John Jansen is suing her for $75,000. Um, and depending on whose side you believe, honestly, I think John Jan Jansen's a piece is, well, I know he's a POS. He's a POS. Because you should not expect anything, any type of spending that happens while you're in a relationship. You got to just eat that. Just eat it. I mean, that would be me being super petty and like asking for everything that I brought all my exes back. I will say in one of my relationships, I was toxic enough where I did do that. But <laughs> um, I was also in my 20s. Okay. <laughs> when you're grown, you don't do that anymore. You just like, you know what? That's, you just got to eat it. And yeah, we'll find out later on what those costs how those costs came to be. All right. So then next, Tamara visits Alexis. And this is where we find all this stuff out. So um, Alexis is irritated that she was not invited um, to Katie's event. And she thinks that she's more fun than um, Shannon. So she should have been invited. And like... Alexis is really stupid. <laughs> it kind of hurts my head to talk about her because I feel like she's just so effing dumb. She's literally a definition of like, she's, she's so dumb. <laughs> anyway. Um, but anyway, so then immediately, of course, you know Tamara and Alexis are going to be talking about Shannon. And so they're talking about Shannon. And then um, this lawsuit comes up. And, excuse me, maybe it's 70000 <laughs> There's been three different numbers that were thrown out, thrown throughout this episode. They said 65,000, 70,000, 75,000. I don't know. But the point is, 
John is suing Shannon because prior to the breakup, he got, got he loaned her some money. So not all that money. And then the other part was a facelift. And I guess in his head, and Tamara said in her confessional, it's like, you know, when you break up, you usually give the ring back. But what do you do when you, when, when the ring was a facelift? You eat the costs because you're a dumbass for giving her a facelift. <laughs> Am I the only one that's thinking that way? It's just like, you are the one who gave her the facelift. And also, too, we're not even talking about the fact, we're not even talking about Shannon's side of it, which Shannon's side of it is that literally Shannon has always paid for everything for John Jan Jansen. She was the breadwinner and was paying for everything. Um, and because also, too, keep in mind, Shannon and John, they were together for a while. So this is even before the kids were in college. So Shannon probably did have the funds to give her money and stuff. So she probably was doing that. And it sounded like she actually was, if you watched any of the past seasons, that that's what she was doing. So if she's always giving him money and if he gives you a facelift, isn't that kind of breaking even? Especially all the years y'all are together. I don't know. I guess for me, I would not expect my partner, even if I was married to them, to pay for my cosmetic surgeries. If I was to have any. Um, maybe married, but like not a, a significant other. That's not, that's not committed. Because again, this is where you have this situation. What do you do? At the end of the day, I still think it's a gift because I think it was dumb that you did that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be paying him a, him a dime. I don't care. Like, unless there's a contract saying like, hey, I paid for this and I, I loaned you this. If, unless there has to be something in writing somewhere where it says a loan. Otherwise, no, absolutely not. And Shannon's theory on this is because of why he's asking for this is because he is spending all this money on Alexis. And so his money's running out because he had all the money to spend Alexis because he wasn't paying for anything when Shannon and him were together, according to Shannon. But I think everybody lying a little bit. So who knows? Y'all let me know in the comments what you think is happening here. I think they're all kind of not really telling the truth. The only thing that I know for sure and for certain is that John Jansen is basula. It's basula. Anyway. Uh, so, and then basically the scene ends where Alexa's like, I got the receipts. Okay. In the final um, scene, well, before the final scene of the episode, we have a little bit of a housewife montage where we see Gina with her son. Um, getting him packed up to go to Travis's because she's about to do this event, um, the um, dinner party, um, like the dinner party and mixology type deal. Um, and then we have Emily um, getting ready with her daughter. And then we have Katie getting ready with her daughter as well. And one by one, all the ladies are arriving. And uh, everyone's there this time, including Alexis. And initially, because Shannon, Shannon's not there yet. Vicky actually is there with Shannon. So Vicky is going to be there with Shannon. Um, but because they're, the, they're on the way there. But they're like the last ones to show up. So um, but while this is happening, um, we have Alexis talking to Katie about like, so why was I invited to your golf outing? And... I love that Katie stood on. She's like, I'm building a friendship with Shannon and I didn't think it would be appropriate. I was like, period. <laughs> like, and, um, oh, and then basically Alexis is like, well, I feel like you're shutting me out. I feel like, a, I feel like there's a competition of like Shannon trying to shut me out of this group before I'm even in this group. And it's like, well, you, Alexis, are not doing yourself any favors because you are coming on this show as John Jansen's cheerleader and we don't know anything of what's going on with you. We know no updates about you. We know nothing else about you. 
All we know is that you are John Jansen's representative. That's all we know about you. So none of the girls can really get to know you, especially the newer girls. And even like Shannon to a certain degree. Because I think honestly, if Alexis wouldn't decide to come in so freaking hot, they probably could have built a friendship at some point. But ne that will never happen. And the reason why I'm saying that is because in Housewives world is weird. It doesn't, it, it doesn't work like real life. In real life, I will never be friends with someone who's dating my ex. who I Especially ex that I have contention with. That, that I have an actual issue with. That I have problems with. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't be friends with you. <laughs> um, no. Mm -mm. I've even faked being friends with some people in my past when I was in my toxic bag just to do some fuck fuckery. <laughs> I used to be child. I'm such a change woman and people don't even know. <laughs> oh, cause old me was just, Oh, I used to be so toxic. <laughs> but love and light. We ain't there anymore. You know, I'm not good. I'm better. <laughs> But younger me, yeah, I was a toxic girl. But anyway, so it this so after this and finally Shannon and Vicky arrive and Tamara's talking trash about them two the whole entire time, especially Shannon. She's just like, yeah, she had to come with Vicky because she needs backup so she could play victim. And side note, I forgot to mention three of the women from Real House, three of the women on this show got new professional looks. And I literally only like, like, one of them. Um, Shannon's is cute. She kind of looks like um, a legally blonde character. Like, she kind of has that outfit on, and it's cute. And her hair is poofed up, and it's, it's giving Jackie O. I love it. A blonde Jackie O. Um, Gina, I don't know what they did with your hair, but no. Absolutely not. And the, and the dress, No. For someone who, <laughs> sorry, I got to get on Gina real quick when it comes to this confessional look. Because it's like, for someone who's giving, you know, Jen such a hard time, at least Jen looks good. Okay? That's one thing you can't take away from Jen. Sometimes she wears too much makeup and it ages her. But outside of that, Jen be looking good. Okay? She don't look like, she don't look like her finances. You still look like your old finances, friend. And I don't know why, what that, what that's about. That confessional look just ain't it. That's all I'm going to say. And then, <laughs> at the dinner party, by the way, the other confessional look that Gina has been, ha been sporting for most of the season, Tamara's wearing that dress. And I'm sorry, Gina, but Tamara is wearing the dress better than you. I don't even like Tamara and she's wearing that dress. She looks good in that dress. Um, and then Tamara's confessional look. I like the dress, but I don't know if I like it on her. Because, like, her face looks beat. This part looks good, but then... And, I mean, I'm not to be ageist or anything, but I don't know what's going on with her arms. Like... Like, I think, like, the tan, like, the spray tan just was looking weird. Maybe the lighting would have been different. I think that would look cute. Because I like the dress, but I don't know if I like it on her. Um, and I like the hairstyle and the makeup that they did with it. But it just, it, it was odd. Um, but I, yeah. So, that was the three new confessionals that occurred with all this. But anyway, let's get back to the, the, the end, the conclusion of this episode. So basically, immediately, once Shannon and Tamara, I mean, once Shannon and Vicky show up, Tamara immediately goes in on Shannon because Shannon decides she's going to have a drink. And it threw all the ladies off, by the way, because no one knew that she was drinking. Because, you know, up until recently, she was saying that she was trying to stop drinking. But now she's backpelling, saying she's going to have a couple drinks. And Tamara immediately just lays it thick on her. And she also feels a way that Vicky's there. She feels like Vicky's enabling this behavior. 
And immediately she just starts calling her an alcoholic and just starts humiliating her. And it's just like, Tamara, Tamara, come here. Come here. It's time for me to get you together. If she truly has substance, is substance abuse issues, what you're doing, I'm not even going to mix words because this, this channel ain't monetized yet. It's fucked up. It's fucked up. If she truly has substance abuse issues, for you to throw it in her face and keep calling her an alcoholic is messed up. Number one. Number two, you don't even know where she's at in her journey if she is an alcoholic. When you truly have substance abuse issues, it can actually kill you to go cold turkey. And you don't even, you're, you're not in her life enough to know whether she like drinks or not. You're accusing her of all these things, but like you don't know what's going on with her to know if she, maybe she needs to have a drink a day to slowly, you know, detox. Like you're not her, med you're not, her, you're not her doctor. You're not a medical professional, you know? Um, and also too, you doing this, you do realize that there are people who watch a show that might be be dealing with substance abuse issues and you are an, <laughs> you're tri you're probably triggering a lot of people that's all I'm gonna say I mean I'm not triggered by it personally per se but like I would I would have been pissed <laughs> if if I was Shannon and Shannon just walking away she's a better woman than me I would throw hands on her it would fade to black. You, how dare you publicly start yelling and calling me an alcoholic? I'm like, I'm about to give you another name to call, call me <laughs> in a minute. Cause I'm about to, I'm about to beat the brakes off of you. Like I was so furious watching this scene and Tamara just kept doubling down. It was so bad to the point where he, both um, Emily and Gina and Heather all chimed in like, yo, no, no, no. They're all trying to stop her for, from doing that. And they also said, I think she's actually doing better. Because clearly, and unless, I don't know if plastic surgery or any type of enhancements can pay for your skin to look better. But when you look at how Shannon looked last season to how she's looking on this show now, she does physically look better better and if she's truly abusing the bottle I don't know how she's still somehow looking better physically I mean everyone's different but like it doesn't seem realistic that that's what's happening so the ladies chime knows like look I think she's trying her best you know and also too it's not like she was going to drink and drive but this is where I'm going to give just a little bit of bail. I don't think Tam Tamara should not be the one who's like calling him an even out because she's not the judge, jury, executioner. And also, too, considering the fact that I love this Shannon, we're going to reverse that real quick and talk about how much she is a drunken stupor multiple times. All throughout this show, she's been a drunken stupor. She's drank herself until unconsciousness. And then in Tamara's weird mind she thinks i mean they're both bad and they're both alcoholic like behavior they're both abusive they're both not alcoholic behavior alcohol abuse behavior because this is one thing you can be you could be someone who abuses alcohol but not necessarily be an alcoholic there we go that's what i was trying to get at i've abused alcohol before if you over drink you're abusing alcohol if you end up drinking till you're drunk, you're abusing alcohol. If you're drinking beyond moderation, you're abusing alcohol. See how that goes? Yes. Shannon's actions, what she did afterwards was messed up because she endangered herself amongst other, every, amongst other people. She could have killed herself or someone else. That's true. But if I was in Shan's position, 
I'll be damned if the person who's going to give me the lecture is literally drinking a bottle of wine in front of me, talking to me about how I have a problem. If you don't get the, <laughs> if you don't get my face, like you can't be high and mighty when you aren't really. Last time I checked, the only only judge. I know your last name is Judge, but you you are not really a judge, Tamara. Okay, I just I just need you to know that. But anyway, so that Shannon ended up getting really upset, and after she, after Tamara doubled down on it, then somehow, some way, Vicky and Tamara start getting into it a little bit. Because Vicky's like, I don't have a personal problem with you, but I don't like how you handled the Trace Amigas thing. And also, too, you just kind of left your friend to dry. You're not treating your friend right. So you have two completely opposite end of approaches of how the friendship is. And I will agree with this. I do agree with Tamara to a certain extent. I do, do I think, um, you know, Vicky's kind of enabling her a little bit? A little bit. But I think... Vicky understands what am I doing babysitting a grown woman? <laughs> She's an adult, just like I am. Tama is taking the complete opposite in the spectrum to the point where it's toxic. You're, you're, it, it, it doesn't translate as you're being a friend. It translates as you're being a mean girl and you're just trying to just make things worse. Because one thing I will say if she really was an alcoholic, what you did at that dinner did not do her any favors. What do you think her coping mechanism would, what do you think her coping mechanism would be or, you know, with you doing all that? Last time I checked, every time you meet up with Shannon, it's not intervention, okay? And who brings wine to intervention? Like, <laughs> Sorry, I'm all, I'm thinking about Always Sunny in Philadelphia because they the intervention episode. If y'all saw, they already know. But <laughs> they're drinking wine in a can while they're giving someone an inter. That's not funny. But sorry, I have a dark sense of humor at times. Sorry. Anyway, so that's all happening, and then from there, Tamara starts mentions John Jansen's lawsuit in front of the whole table. And by the way, everyone's just dead silent. And I love Jen and Kate's, Katie's um, banter back and forth because they're the only ones that are eating the food. And they're just like, yeah. Because Katie's like, does this happen every every dinner? And Jen's like, yeah. It's like, the food's good. She's like, yeah, I know. And so they're just on the side, enjoy the food. And just, they basically are just like the popcorn, My Michael Jackson popcorn meme. That's them too. They're just like, ain't <laughs> got nothing to do with us. Um, which is kind of messed up, but yeah. And side note. So when Tamara was basically going off on Shannon at the dinner and reading her for filth when it came to how she needs therapy and she's an alcoholic and she needs therapy to figure out why she drinks so much and why she has a bad taste in men. Like what gets me is that... <laughs> Alexis, Alexis Bellino, that's a read on you too because you're dating the same dude that she was dating. That was a read on you and she didn't even catch it. I was like, man. <laughs> and then the other thing that cracked that, it was messed up but kind of cracked me up is in the scene where all this is happening, you have side conversations where, you know, I've already pointed out that like Jen and Katie are having side conversations. And then... Also, Heather's having side conversations with, I think it was either Gina or Emily. And they're talking about, but her face looks good, though. She looks good, though. Like, just kind of doing these side conversations. And I'm like, man, only in Housewives where you have this kind of chaos of kind of toxicity. But then there's also some humor and toxicity from, like, the side. Uh, but, yeah. And so that gets brought up, the John Jansen lawsuit. And then that's when Alexis Bellino gets activated and starts showing the receipts and starts talking all this trash. Basically takes it to a whole nother level of toxic. Worse than what Tamara was doing even. And yeah, long story less long. Shannon storms out of there. She does not come back out. 
Um, she she does stay in the restaurant for a little bit, just crying. And um, Jen did go after her, but Jen was the only one who did. And Shannon felt a way that like Jen was the only one that came after her, so she was okay. Um, but that's because Jen's a good person. <laughs> Jen is like literally, I feel like at everyone, Jen's like the sweetest person on this show. Um, also, ah, let me rewind. So remember when the haters were hanging out earlier? I forgot to mention this. When the haters were hanging out earlier, aka um, Tamara and um, Emily, and they were talking about Jen. I see... So they are similar to me. I think I've shared this with y'all before. Where I do have a hard time understanding people who are dependent on others. Um, but I also don't beat people when they're down, when they're dependent on others. I just hope that they'll change. Um, and then when they don't, play stupid games with stupid prizes, that's on you. But... <laughs> You know, or if it works for you, okay, cool. If you like it, I love it. It just can never be me. But um, that's that's what they're saying is the reason. But like, I think it's deeper than that because they just they're just haters about it. Because I I mean, if we're gonna justify like that, I mean, I just do I beat Jen up every single episode about her finances? No. Do I not like that she's dependent on others instead of herself? No, I don't like that either. But like the fact that you make it a point to bring it up every single episode, what are we doing? You know, I and, and I have plenty of people that are in my life that have been like that or are like that still. I don't bring it up every chance I get. I mean, <laughs> why? What's the point of that? Unless you're hating. So I just wanted to bring that back up and bring it around because I forgot to mention that. But anyway, so. While this, so while Shannon is out about to leave, then we have, um, <laughs> Vicky gives these girls a speech about sisterhood and about how they are good Christian women. And this is not how we should be treating women. And all the women that are confessionals are all shading her. They're like, this is rich coming from Vicky of all people. And I'm sorry, this is probably one of the first times that um, Emily had me cracking up. Because <laughs> Emily was like, of all people, Vicky's giving this speech. Okay, once she's done giving this speech, roll back the footage of all the times where she was not acting like a good Christian woman going off on everyone. And <laughs> just on cue, production went from season one all like like four different times at least or five or six different times throughout the years of Vicky being on this show doing the very opposite of what she's preaching to all the women. But anyway, the episode concludes where they just leave the dinner. They, the dinner did not go as planned. And really, to me, I think really it looked like Jen and Kate, Katie were the only two that ate the whole entire dinner and just like, we're going to eat. <laughs> See, we're going to eat it. <laughs> but that does conclude the episode uh I'll, hopefully y'all don't take what i say too seriously on this show because to me it's just a tv show i don't know none of these people in real life and in some cases i don't think i want to know a lot of them um you know just based off what i see on tv but what i know but anyway that does conclude the episode please like comment subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content it's your girl sharon aka the middle nostalgic runner i will see you next time Bye.